How's it going guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my own hot wire cutter for, well, for me, mainly it's for surfboard building, but it could be used for any other foam related projects. So uh, I filmed this video uh, last year for another build series for one of my surfboards, but I figured this would make for a great standalone video and I haven't gotten around to editing that series of videos yet. So I figured I would just post this video now. Hopefully this will help you guys out. So let's jump into that portion of the video that I filmed. All right, now that we got the blank for the sup all glued together and I figured why not use this time to go over my hot wire cutter again. I have a video that I've done years ago in one of the build series going over this hot wire cutter, but I figured Ah, it's probably a good time now to revisit it. Make a proper box for this because this unit here, I kind of cobbled together really quickly. As you can see here, it just mounted on a piece of plywood. Um, it works really well. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this unit, but we can do better, especially now that we have 3D printing. I'm gonna mock something up in Fusion 360 and remount this. And then while I do that, I'm gonna go over how this system works for you guys. Cause I know some of you have asked me in the comments uh, how to make a hot wire cutter. The other thing we'll do is for my hot wire bow for actually doing the cutting. This one's just a little bit too small because this is used more for just making regular surfboards, not stand up paddle boards. So I'm gonna make another one of these frames. Very easy, there's nothing to this. As you can see, it's like four pieces of wood. Make a bow add some hardware, put some wire on it. This I cobbled together very quickly and I've been using it ever since. So first thing I'm gonna do, 3D print off a box for this, mount this, and then hot wire to blank. Okay, I've realized that the bow itself actually does fit. However, due to the, so this is a piece of nichrome wire and I'll talk about that in a sec, that's mounted. What happens is you need a spring to adjust for, to account for the wire stretch when you're using it. The spring gets in the way because it's actually into the cutting area. So what I've decided to do instead is just add a block of wood to extend my bow. You're obviously not gonna do that if you're making one from scratch, but I don't wanna build another bow just to make these cuts. So I'm just gonna extend this so that way the spring will end up in this area here and I'll have a full piece of nichrome wire going across the opening of the bow. So what I have here is an S hook that I made from a penny nail or finishing nail and it works well. So I'm gonna leave it All right, to explain this assembly on this side is just a bolt attached to the piece of wood. So I have nuts and then the bolt sandwiched in here. And then to that, I have two washers on this side. What I can do is then fit the piece of wire, one of my wire leads around this and then tighten it down. And then on the opposite side, this allows me to do is take a spring in this assembly here when I run my wire across, my spring then can just hook on here and it's a quick release. So I can just hook it on and hook it off like this. So here's my nichrome wire. I have a 26 gauge. I have a hundred feet of it. This is basically for me, probably a lifetime supply. Uh, one piece of wire lasted me like years and cutting multiple blanks. If you can't get this stuff or at least easily find it, you could use the very, very thin, like the E-string guitar wire would probably work. Oh, also, if you're wondering, nichrome wire? Nichrome wire is the same wire that's in your toaster. Stuff that glows red. So all I have done on the opposite side is a very similar assembly, but I don't have an S-hook. What I have is just a bolt and then some washers here and the wing nut, and I'm just gonna wrap the wire in between. And then I tighten it down. my bag of springs. I'm gonna use a new spring because my other one is on another piece of nichrome wire that I wanna keep using. So let's see if we can dig out something that might work. Something like this will work fine. It's got two ends on it.
Now one spring wasn't enough, so I uh, added two more. That'll give it some some extra springiness. Tighten it up real good and wrap it around, lock it in place. And what I like about this is now it makes this wire removable. I can just slip these springs off with this hook, off the S hook. I'm sure there could be improvements made to this, but for how often I do hot wire cutting, this works adequately sufficient. All right, let's talk a little bit about the power supply to power the hot wire cutter. So you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need one of these standard household dimmers. In North America, they're 110 volt dimmers. Part one, part two is you need a transformer. I got this unit from jacobsonline.biz. I'll post a link in the description below. It's really handy. The website has lots of diagrams or charts to figure out what power supply you need for a given amount of nichrome wire. So, so I determined for my application that I need a 100 VA power supply. So this one here, I'm able to run it either in series in 24 volts or I can run it in parallel for uh, 12 volts. I'm running it right now in 24 volt configuration. Follow the wiring diagram with your transformer. There are other places you can get transformers such as old battery chargers. So for surfboard building, I, I probably recommend 100 VA transformer will be fine. Okay, so how to wire this up? Well, I have mine running in series. So I've uh, shorted out the black and the yellow that's according to, to the diagram. And then I have my two leads that come off here. Those will connect to the hot wire cutter. So we'll wire that up later. But for now, let's show you how to wire it to the dimmer. I have power cord that I salvaged from something else. I have my ground, I have a neutral, and I have a hot. So on the other end, I have my ground wire, my green wired up. So that's to this. And then I have my hot from the plug wired into one of the leads off of the dimmer. And then the other lead from the dimmer gets wired into the input side on the transformer, like so. And then on the other side of the transformer, we have that wired directly into the white or your neutral on this side. So the wiring is very simple, as you can see here. Now, if you're in the Europe or any other parts of the world that use 220, um, you'll have to kind of figure that out on uh, yourself. I suspect it's very similar, but this is for North American wiring. And then my dimmer will be able to switch it on and off, and I'll be able to control the heat and the power with the dimmer itself and the dial. So wiring is very simple. And then right here, I have my super long extension cord that will go to my hot wire cutter. All it is is just an end on it, as I mentioned before. That's a plug, a female plug. And then I have the two ends here that I am going to wire to the transformer like so. And that will run to the hot wire bow. So now I'm going to stuff this all into my 3D printed box that I have right here. So once I get that all installed, I'll come back and uh, we'll wire it to the bow. Also bonus points if anyone can figure out where max power, where this reference came from. all this stuff off afterwards.
Okay, well, I think that looks pretty good. That is my hot wire cutter put into a really cool looking case. I'll post the files on Thingiverse if uh, anyone wants to print their own. Alright, I guess I should explain how this bow is constructed since I actually ended up not making another one because I realized that it's wide enough that I can use it just by adding this little piece of extension. So, make a frame out of wood, PVC, ABS, whatever, pipe. Um, probably don't make it out of metal. So you got your bow made, make sure it's solid and rigid, there's no flex to it. Add a switch to it, I just used, at the time when I built this, these were the parts I had on hand, like I said, this is cobbled together but you can get some fancy switches, a nice switch. I just put uh, a cheap power light switch on here that I had. I, to it, had an extension cord and I wired the cord to it and left the plug on the end. Don't go plugging this into the outlet, the mains outlet, because that's just gonna be not good. What, technically what you probably should do is change these to like an XT60 or an XT90 connector so there's no way of confusing, um, of plugging this into the wall. But if you're the only one using it, it's probably fine to do what I've done here. But do as I say, not as I do. I don't recommend leaving this as this plug. Anyways, because what I do with this is then I can plug it into my hot wire, which on the other end, I have just an extension cord extender to it. So anyways, probably put like an XT60 connector on it, which I may or may not do eventually. I put a switch on it because it's really handy for when I'm operating the bow. I can just flick it on, do my cut, flick it off. So that way I don't have to control the bow at the power source. Flick it on. You might have to adjust the temperature as you go. I think I have mine a little low right now, but it is cutting pretty well. And once you're almost done your cut, or when you're done your cut, you wanna flick it off or else uh, it'll burn off the residual EPS uh, melted foam on the wire and it'll just create a lot of smoke. Right now, barely any smoke is created because it's within the foam. So as I'm coming to the end here, You'll see, I'll leave it on, but you'll see it starts smoking. So I'm gonna turn it off and that stops the smoking. Look at that beautiful cut, really smooth. I'm not gonna cut too deep. I hope you guys found this video helpful to learn how to make your own hot wire cutter. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.